So in a previous video, I talked about creating a pathway for yourself for learning and growth as an artist if you're a beginner or a little bit above that level. And I created a table on what to learn and the approach I would take to master each fundamental if I were to start from scratch as a beginner character artist. Top G Ruli Boy recommended that I made a series going deep into those fundamentals that I talked about in the video and it wasn't a bad idea at all. So thanks bro. Good day everyone, I'm John Apex and today I talk about the best way to learn anatomy for character art in my own opinion. I hope you brought your sleeping max today cause talking about anatomy might make you sleepy and my voice will definitely be your lullaby. So I'm not really going to do a deep dive into anatomy, I'm just going to talk about and show just how I would approach studying anatomy like I stated in the table which is all about structure. And when we talk about structure, we're basically talking about shapes. So our study is going to follow three approaches. Number one is studying and understanding shapes or 3D shapes. Number two is gesture drawing. This is kind of like the fun thing we do where we improve our observation skills in a chill manner that doesn't really hurt our brains. And the third approach is the actual learning proper, which involves structure studies, where we consciously hurt our brain by learning new stuff. And I'm probably the laziest person that will teach you anatomy, so my process is especially designed so that I don't stress myself too much. So this is the easiest process you are going to get. I'm honestly not someone that places huge emphasis on learning every muscle and bone in the human body when it comes to learning anatomy for art. Now if you do know every bone and muscle in the human body, that's cool, more power to you, you are your MD shit, blaze on. But um, my own approach towards anatomy involves understanding the structure of what I'm looking at or what I'm looking to create and then breaking them down into simple shapes like triangles, squares, rectangles, cubes and cylinders. Kind of like problem solving using shapes. If you practice drawing these basic shapes really well, you practice seeing these shapes in the references you collect to study, you'll be able to draw basically anything. It's also important to know that we are in a 3D world and the objects we see, the people we see, are all 3D. So whenever we are looking at references and breaking them down, we should do it with the mind of, that's a 3D object, and how can I use the basic shapes I know to approach this problem? It will better help to draw these objects in different angles and perspective. In summary, the best way to start learning anatomy is to practice drawing basic shapes because it serves as a great foundation whereby you can build the rest of your drawing. I once heard a quote that goes, if you can't draw a simple shape and make it interesting, how are you going to draw a complex one? Gesture drawing is where you have fun. It is where you make simplified sketches that focuses on flowing movement or pose that the body is making. They are basically quick loose drawings of the human figure. So facial features, fingers, shading, perfection or anatomical correctness is not what we're focusing on, unless of course that's what you're going for. Doing gesture drawing helps you decide which details are important in representing the overall shape of the subject and there is no right or wrong way to achieve that. I personally just make use of stick figures, lines and different shapes and I try to be as loose and dynamic as possible in my approach. I also try to capture what I like the most about a certain pose and even exaggerate it if I wanted to. Setting a timer for gesture exercises helps your improvement process. Anywhere from a minute to five minutes should be enough for a single drawing. This doesn't mean that you should rush, neither does it mean that you should spend an eternity on a single pose. Just find that sweet spot because the point of gesture drawing is to improve our anatomy by consciously improving our understanding of the flow of the subject we are studying. Doing gesture drawing makes you understand how the human body is connected and how it moves. It makes you as an artist conscious of where you are lacking especially when the time pressure is on. 
It also helps prevent overworking a particular drawing for those of us that are perfectionists. From my research, a lot of resources recommend doing gesture drawing from life, that is going out to the mall if there is any in your area or anywhere people are moving. But let's be honest, nothing is making you leave your comfortable ergonomic chair to go out in the cold or in my case, the heat, dust and smoke in the name of gesture drawing when I have the internet by my side. We are not really that dedicated. I enjoy doing gesture drawings because at the end of the practice sessions, eventually, I usually go back to those sketches and work on them, refine them till it's a finished piece. Before we move on, I just wanted to remind you that whatever you're learning, try to make it fun. Even if it's just one single thing you learn in a day, that's enough. No knowledge is too small. You shouldn't spend hours upon hours practicing every day unless that's something you're cool with. Just a few minutes is enough to really get a vital information about what you're studying in. Doing things this way and in moderation will save you from burnout and keep you from totally hating art. <laughs> Work at a pace that best suits your person but still challenges you in the process. Doing structure and gesture studies are the easiest steps you can take to improve your anatomy, thereby improving your figure drawing skills which is the ultimate goal. This is where we see the application of our study of basic 3D shapes come in handy. Because structure is all about using simple shapes that we are familiar with to break down complex forms, such as using cylinders to represent the arms and legs, a sphere or square to represent the head, and a cube to represent the pelvis. Basically, structure is all about construction. We can study structure as a whole or in parts as a whole in the sense that we are studying the whole entire human figure. This can be tedious and overwhelming if you're a beginner and that is where you might prefer studying structure in parts and then joining it all together at the end. This means picking a part of the human body to focus on and study. You could start with the human head, limbs, torso or pelvis and this learning process could last for weeks or months depending on your aptitude and other million factors honestly. The human head or face is basically the most noticeable thing about a person. It's the first thing people look at and it gives a lot of information about a person's personality and other stuff. And that applies to your characters too. So, knowing how to draw the human head and understanding its structure is extremely important. When drawing the human head, you see a lot of construction lines going X and Y axis, but there is one thing you need to note whenever drawing the human head, and that is two simple shapes. These two simple shapes will make your life a whole lot easier whenever you are learning about the human head. A sphere for the cranium and a box shape for the jaw. This is why I talked about the importance of understanding basic 3D shapes. So when I'm drawing the human head, I usually have several approaches but I always start with a box or a sphere with an almost equal height and width and then I add a vertical and horizontal center line creating a cross. Wherever you place these lines will tell us the direction of the head or the eye level. The next step will be to add this extra ellipse and a cross. We do this because it makes it easier for us to draw and connect the jaw and chin of our character and it indicates where the ear will go. After that, we add the front plane of the face. The distance between the top of the head, the hairline, eyebrow line, nose and chin should be the same. I personally make the measurements instinctively with my eyes because usually I draw stylistically. But get the basics of this template down first before you begin going crazy and making your adjustments or style. This is where the practice 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 advice comes into play. Because now you have a foundation and now you know what you should practice. The human head in different angles. and. Please, always use references when you're practicing this. You need to understand this generic head shape and how to construct it before you move on to drawing complex expressions so that you don't confuse yourself. And that is why you don't just jump into stylized arts if you're a beginner without understanding how things work realistically. All your favorite artists understand this fundamental. They may not execute it in the same 
exact fashion or use the same method but they understand it nonetheless and that is why they are able to create stylized art easily you need to know the rules before you can break them also don't get discouraged by all these lines you're seeing coming out of the universe of the character's eyes and whatnot just take it one step at a time the way you should approach this learning process is that you should copy and draw alongside the artist or study materials that you're using as many times as possible until you find yourself doing it without assistance from the source material and eventually you build muscle memory do your own homework no amount of videos you watch will improve you if you don't actually put your head down and practice this fundamental the limbs the limbs these include the hands and the feet so hands I'm not a master at drawing hands and there are definitely better places to learn this but my understanding of the hands and the feet gets my drawing to where it needs to go. I'll probably make a dedicated video on this but remember the hand is a 3D object as well so you should visualize it in that sense whenever you are studying it and breaking it down. This stuff takes practice, so for me, I'll advise that you learn enough to get your art to where it needs to or solve your immediate problem and then you can always come back and revisit the study of the hands to improve. So for me, when I'm drawing the hands, the shape and size of the palm is really important because it determines the placement of the fingers. Sometimes I draw the palm as a square. This is usually when I'm working instinctively and I just want to get the shape of the hands out fast. But structurally or constructively, ooh, look at me speaking good English. Primary 4 John that stole people's lunch will be so proud. <laughs> so structurally or constructively, the palm which is basically a curved brick would look like a curved square or trapezoid with a triangular section for the thumb the next step is to add the shape for the knuckles which are usually circles where the fingers will be attached to the palm i instinctively measure the distance between the top and the bottom of the palm and use that length to draw the longest finger I then draw a guideline for the rest of the fingers which are basically cylinders chopped in three Remember, we're trying to force our brain to observe things in 3D. So we use cylinders for fingers. Same thing applies to the upper and forearms. They are basically just cylinders with a sphere for the elbow. When we're doing arm studies, we break it down into four shapes. A sphere for the shoulder, cylinders for the upper and forearms, and the elbow a sphere. You can do a circle or a square for the hands since that's not what we're focusing on here. Once you have these shapes in the bag, you can confidently break down any pose and nothing will slow your art process down because adding the details of the muscles will become relatively easier once you've broken down the shape of a reference pose. And like I keep saying, when you're practicing the structure of the hands or doing structure studies in general, use references i take a picture of my hands and arms a lot to use as references whenever i get stuck or confused about a particular pose and i honestly advise that you do the same so you need to slam dunk that ego of yours in the trash bin and go online and get references or just use yours trust me your hands are enough even if you have an extra sixth finger I can't go into more details about the structure of the hands because I really don't know more than this. But when practicing, start with simple hand gestures before you move into complex ones in perspective. And take your time with this. Same thing goes for other parts of the body, the legs and the feet. I don't practice the foot to be honest because most of the characters I draw are usually wearing shoes and when I run into a situation where I need to draw the feet, toes and all, I look for references online or I just take pictures of mine. The human foot doesn't have a lot of muscles and for me it's more easier to draw than the hands. But let's look at the foot from the side view which to me is the easiest view that anyone could draw the foot and then break it down. So breaking down the foot into 3D volumes, let's see. We have this weird shape that slants downward which is a huge part of the foot. The next part is the toes which we will interpret as a cylinder. Same thing with the heel of the foot which meets the top end of the wedge. 
so we can use these three shapes to sketch the foot no matter the position it is in before we draw our outline serving as a really good guide remember we are breaking things down to the simplest shape so therefore you can break any part of the body in this case the foot into the simplest digestible shape for your brain that's the same thing i'm doing here there are more than one ways to do this there are more simplified approaches but this is just mine torso and pelvis for torso and pelvis i use both cubes and oval shapes to represent the rib cage and the cube or box for the pelvis you can use underwear to represent the hips or pelvis because let's be honest it does look like an underwear practice this in different positions and perspectives doing these structure studies makes it easier to add muscles you just kind of know where things are supposed to go once you've done enough structure studies okay i think that's it and of course in the future i'll dive deeper into each part but i believe i've touched on more than enough to get you started on your anatomy improvement journey if you're just a beginner learning anatomy or you are sort of following the table i made in the previous video for character artists at this stage at this learning stage do your best to not worry about adding values or anything else because it's just going to slow down your learning process and make things very convoluted. Once you're done with structure studies and proportions, you'll practically be able to draw anything because you'll have a fundamental understanding of what you're looking at and you'll be able to break down anything into the simpler shapes. Okay guys, that's it for today. <sighs> you can wake up now. Come on. You can wake up now. Uh, the plane has landed. <laughs> okay guys that's it for today if i missed something or you have something to add to this video please drop that nugget down in the comment section you might just be helping someone out you can check out this video on the art fundamentals that i made previously and how to easily navigate your way in learning the art fundamentals i believe it will bring you a lot of value until next time guys i'm john apex and peace stay creative